You speak Spanish like we do, you pronounce this the th. Gracias. <laughs> we don't know anything about the second season, so what has this uh, new season for your character, what has it given to you? What has this meant for you and your career? I, I think this, this season takes everything that we uh, got from first season and then pushes it up at least 12 notches. Like, it's very high octane. There's a lot of stunts this season. It's an exciting season for me to present to the audience. Um, also, I think in the first season, we spent like the first half of that season looking at this character almost from an objective point of view. And we, in, as an audience, weren't sure whether we could have faith in her or not. Um, and then as we moved on, we became a bit more intimate as uh, an audience with her and understood some of the motivations. The second season, we walk alongside Emily very closely and we understand uh, what she's going through. And in this season, it really is a question of identity and her shattered identity, which is really wonderful, wonderfully portrayed by some of the artwork that they have out there um, in having this sort of shattered mirror imagery. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, stop moving. Nice. Uh, Emily. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Emily seems to be very complex uh, heroine uh, of, of the story. She's very, very complex, and there's also an important physical dimension to to this character. Uh, so, but she's not masculine, but she's she's a feminine heroine, but that's very, very active, very physical, very complex. Uh, what can you tell us about that for you, uh, having the physical part as well as the emotional part going on? This was a really fun season because we got to explore that to another level. Do you want to do that first before I keep talking? So uh, on the other side of that, it was really wonderful to bring a sort of reality and uh, vulnerability to that same character who seems, you know, ultimately she is an anti-heroine, right? She's kind of in the vein of characters like Tony Soprano and so on, right? Where we walk a very fine line and question our own moral compass by relating to her or following her. And I think that's a bit more of an honest portrayal of a human being, which is, we're, which is what we're moving closer and closer towards as we uh, tell stories in television nowadays. Um, so that was fun as well. <laughs> Okay, you're also the executive producer, and that's a very important thing. Uh, it gives you a certain power, it gives you a certain possibility to control the end product. Uh, what is it that, that you're expecting, uh, uh, both from your role as an uh, executive producer, but also from, from the series? Well, we're telling a story that is unusual in the landscape of television, although television period is kind of like the Wild West right now. Um, so anything goes in many ways. Uh, our story is told like an independent film. Uh, first season, we shot all 10 episodes together with one director, which was quite a feat. That's very unusual for te television. Uh, this season, we have three directors, and ultimately, my role as a producer um, was kind of a natural progression for me, career-wise, um, because even as an actor, do, do you need to do this here? <laughs> it's whenever you're comfortable stopping. Anyway. Yeah? yeah? Take that okay. and I'll, I'll take that. Okay. Okay, so as an actor, uh, throughout my time kind of being in front of the camera, I've always sat with, in fact, I, I have a colleague who I've worked with for many years over here, and he can attest to that, Edward uh, Morrison, who's done my hair in other series. Um, I've always sat with directors and producers and chatted with writers, so I've always been interested in the other side of the camera. The camera crew and I would hang out and they would let me play with the camera as well. So to be in the sort of storytelling side of a production was a very natural progression because I've always been a storyteller. Ultimately, I think actors, um, some actors really are just actors, right? They want to be in front of the camera. Uh, and then there are other actors, and I've mentioned this before, like Robert Redford, uh, who contributed greatly to All the President's Men and to many of his other projects, or um, Brad Cooper now, who is also a director and uh, assisted with the writing and so on, uh, as well as being an actor. Uh, Tom Hardy, who's assisting with writing on his show Taboo. Uh, there are actors who are just natural storytellers, and they see the big picture. 
and they like to participate in the big picture. And I feel like I'm, I'm a part of that sort of tribe. <laughs> okay, let me see if I can talk about the other thing. <laughs> and did I say that? I said. But I'll, but I'll, <laughs> the question is, does this mean that in the future you would like to perhaps direct? Yes. <laughs> what type of series? Something like Absentia? I don't know, you know. I think Absentia is fun because the concept of a psychological thriller allows the opportunity to explore interesting sort of camera. Um, uh, David Fincher is really great at that. Uh, a lot of his stories, like Requiem for the Dream, uh, for a Dream, um, gets into a character's head. And I think there's something really artistic and exciting and unique and exploratory about that. Um, so I wouldn't mind doing something along these lines. Okay, in the series, we see you, uh, you know, without, in many scenes, without makeup on, you know, just not, not dressed real well, you're, 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 you're the result of all the action going on. Um, such a beautiful woman as yourself, you know, you, we've seen many action... No. I <laughs> uh, There are many action uh, uh, f female stars that are made up in the middle of the action scenes. But obviously that's something that you weren't looking for here. Why is it that you to chose to have this more rugged, kind of down-to-earth look? But we had to convey the reality of the character. The character has been through a very serious trauma. And although it seems like I'm not wearing makeup, in fact, sometimes we are. Sometimes the makeup artist is adding, you know, extra under eyes so that she looks even more uh, distraught and tired and so on and so forth. Um, so it was a choice, and it was purposefully done so that we could honor this character and honor what she had been through. Um, one of the things, actually, do this. Okay. okay. One of the uh, things that we were very focused on when we first started the series, because this story is so extreme, the events that happen to these characters are so extreme, it was important for us to find a way to ground the character and ground these stories. And so some of the references that we had, because it's not it's not necessarily immediately acceptable to someone like me who lives in the United States or maybe to some of the people who live in uh, Western Europe. Uh, but we were wondering, okay, how do we ground this in, in a real reaction, in a real world um, existence? And the only thing that we really could grab from as a group was uh, stories from World War II and survivors and, uh, and heroes from World War II. And I think that was, you know, part of our inspiration as well. And so we have to honor the reality of a person possibly going through something like that. That being said, this character in this season, although she looks, you know, rough around the edges, um, she's still a sensual being. And I think we play with that here. There's some really wonderful sort of... Um, that they get to play with, especially this season. Uh, so I think there is like a, a really interesting sort of beauty to a character that's got that kind of edge. Hopefully. Okay. Um, we don't know anything about this first this uh, this this season. We're going to watch the first episode together now. Uh, where is Emily? In, is there any political aspect of, of, of where she finds herself in this new story, this new season? Mm -hmm. She's trying to find her new normal. She's also trying to piece together these shattered elements of her own identity. Um, there is a sentence that I love that the character speaks this season, and it doesn't, it's not a spoiler sentence, so I'll, I'll give it to you. And I really, I think it speaks to who this character is, especially this season. She says to somebody who she's supposed to be helping, trying to help, she says, don't let them write your history for you. And I think that is this character summed up for second season. Okay. Okay. Uh, one last question on my part uh, of this uh, episode that we're about to see. Is there any scene that you want to tell us that we should pay special attention to, that we should focus on? Anything <laughs> that was special to you? Anything that was special to you or that has a special meaning? Or? Uh, I, 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 I love this season. I love the work that my fellow actors have done in this season. So. 
This is our launch pad, but it gets crazier as we move on um, in this season. So I think this is a really nice kind of starting point. Um, and again, we're kind of reintroducing everyone and letting you know where everyone is at. Um, I think, you know, yeah, let's just leave it at that. <laughs> Pues, eh, si os parece, damos paso a vuestras preguntas. Yes. Thank you, thank you guys for coming here. Thank you so much for everything. You guys have supported us and we get to do something like this because there's an audience like you, so thank you honestly so much. Um, I am the wonderful beneficiary of all of your love and, and you know, dedicated attendance, I guess, so thank you. Quiero... Quiero daros las gracias a todos porque...